All right, so let's talk through this scenario where you need to model irregular growth rates. However, where your periods are not annual, uh, you're wanting though to see growth happen on a annual basis. The month or period in which that growth occurs may not be the first of the say year. Uh, and you want to be, have the analysis dynamic to analysis period. Okay, so those are called the parameters of this scenario. I'm gonna show you one way to accomplish this. Now, uh, there are many ways in which you could do this. This, I, I think, is fairly straightforward, this methodology, and it involves uh, using a helper row to identify the period in which the growth occurs. It involves using an index match feature to find the growth rate that relates to that year. Uh, it includes some logic that's necessary for handling when the line item begins. So let's say you're doing a development deal and it's, um, I don't know, marketing, a marketing line item and you want that marketing to grow or you expect marketing expenses to grow by some percentage each year starting at the analysis period going forward. Um, but that marketing line item doesn't start until say month 25, right? So that's gonna handle all of those scenarios. So here I have a template file. Uh, I have left the cells that we are going to manipulate, manipulate in this, call it salmon color. Uh, we're gonna be filling those in. Everything else I, I put in for you just to save you the time. You're gonna need some assumptions. You'll need an analysis start. You'll need some growth rates across some number of years. What I like to do is I like to have up to five years of growth and I get that you might be modeling out to say year 10. The last assumption is year five and beyond. Um, Cause quite frankly, right? Who's forecasting growth eight years out into the future. And then I have a growth month assumption, a drop down that you can choose a month and then it will output the number for that month, so March would be three, October would be 10, December 12, and so forth. Then we're gonna have a helper row. That's the row that will output the growth percentage in that period. We'll have a year row, we'll have a period row, likely, in this case, I'll use months. We'll have a date row, and then we'll actually have the cash flow row, and we'll build this cash flow row such that we could copy it down for multiple line items. And when I say line items, I'm talking income, income, operating expense, or capital expenditure type line items, operating income line items. Okay, so let's start with just the growth month. So what we need to do is we need to identify in, and this is important because in our helper row, we'll be using a month function. That month function takes a date and returns the month that that date is in. So if it's January 15th, 2022, it will return one if we use the month function. And so, but we need to first identify which number is each of these months. Now, Excel does not know that Jan, J-A-N, or June, J-U-N, uh, relate to a one for Jan or a six for June unless we expressly tell it that. And we do that by creating a list like so, okay? And then this list will output a number. Um, so for instance, here I have March. What I'm gonna do is I'll just say equals match. We'll be using the match function here to pull in the value that relates to March. If you're unfamiliar familiar with match, match find, looks at a range of values and returns the lookup value, the place of that lookup value in that range or array. And so here it first asked me for a lookup value. The lookup value is this drop down menu. Um, then it asks, what is the lookup array? If I scroll down here, I have the array from January through to December. I hit comma, and then it asks match type. Is it exact, less than, or greater than an exact, which is zero. Close parentheses, and it returns a three for March. Again, that's because March falls one to three values in this range of cells. If I change this, say, to January, it's gonna change that to one, 
If I went to April, change it to four and so forth. Let's go to, I don't know, let's go to July. Okay. So now we have the growth month. Next, we need to just put, let's just create our period row. So this is starts in month zero, and then we need a year. And what is the year? Well, the year is equal to round up the month divided by 12 to the zero. It gives us a year of zero. And then the next month is what? The previous month plus one. And the year, if I just copy that over, is going to be one divided by 12 rounded up to the nearest uh, one, to the, to the nearest zero decimal places. So that'd be a year of one. I'm just going to copy those all the way out to the end of what will be 120 periods, not including period zero, like so. Okay. So now we have our year row, our period row. Let's go ahead and do our date row. So what is time zero? Well, that is equal to EO month, which EO month again takes the last day of the month that is selected. So in this case, I go EO month start date is this, and then I can move forward or backward a number of months. I'm gonna go back one month by doing negative zero or negative one. And what that will do is it will find the last day of the month pre prior to this date which will be December 31st, 2025. That is our time zero, our month zero, year zero. And then, and then we will do equals month, the previous month forward one month, because these are month periods. So month one ends January 31st, 2026 in this case. We'll copy and paste that out to the end. So now we have our date header, year, month, and date. Then we need this helper row. So what is this helper row going to output? Well, the first thing it's going to output, and we'll build this in stages, is whether the current month is a growth month or not. And I do that by going equals month for the date of this period, close parentheses, and if I stop, you'll see that this outputs, uh, it's in a percentage. Let me turn it to a integer so you can see this. It's a one, right? So if I went to the over like so, you'll see January is a one, February is a two, March is a three, April a four, and so forth. Then I'm gonna ask it using Boolean logic, is that equal to this value? And I'll hit F4 so I can copy it. And it's not false. It's not until we hit, what, month seven, July. So there you have a true. So what will happen if you're familiar with Boolean logic is a false is equal to a zero and a true is equal to a one. And so all we have to do is take that and multiply it by some value. And that value, when the answer to this Boolean logic statement is true, will return that value, otherwise it will return a zero. So what is that value? Well, it is going to be the growth rate depending on the year of the analysis. Now keep in mind, the growth rate will be based on the analysis begin. So if for instance, uh, you start your line item in month 24, this value will, it will ignore the previous growth rate. So there is a, there's another methodology you can use if you want to, for instance, have the growth begin where this year one is not the analysis year one, it's actually the operation begin year one. And that's a whole other logic that I won't get into here. So I'm going to assume that growth is based on these years and that these years are analysis years, okay? So I start with this formula. I'll take that Boolean logic. I'm gonna close parentheses around it just more visually. I recognize that that is a statement in and of itself. And I multiply this by I'm gonna open parentheses again, just so I can see for visual purposes what uh, the statement is, relates to, uh, an index. And I'm gonna use an index match. So I'm gonna pull in one of these five values, hit F4 on those, and they're found within a match statement. And the match is important, right? I, you might be asking, why don't you just use an index and call the, the, the year? That's because of the year five plus concept. So 
The mash asks for a lookup value. The lookup value is the year. The lookup array is this range of years here, one through five. Hit F4 on that because we're gonna be copying to this right, to the right, and we want those values to be absolute. And then the match type is uh, less than, I believe. <laughs> we'll double check here in a second. Okay, so then I convert this to a percentage. Why? Because it's going to be pulling in one of these percentages. Now if I go all the way out to the end, I paste that, it gives me an NA. The reason why is because it was not less than it's actually greater than. So let me update that, do a one. And I always get those mixed up. Okay, so again, if we come back to this formula, what is it? It is an index match where we're pulling in a greater than or equal to this value. So, or in other words, if the, if the value does not appear in that match range, then it takes the greatest value in the max range, which in this case is five. What that does is it means that all years beyond five will use this 3%. And we can see that as we scroll to the right. The first change is in year one, month seven, okay? Uh, the next change is in month 19 and so forth. Now, you might be asking, well, what if I do January? You actually have growth happen in the very first month, and you may not want that. Now, the, qu the quickest fix to this is to do this. You can either, and this is what I prefer, put year two, and that assumes that there is no growth in the year one, but then it's asking, it gives us an NA, and so the alternative is we do a year one, we expand this range like so. And then we put zero here. Do five, four and a half, four, three and a half, and three. And then when we do that, your first bump will actually occur here in year two. So that's another option that you can choose. I'm gonna leave that there. Um, it just depends on how you want that growth to begin, whether you do not want a growth to happen in the first year of analysis um, or you do. I'm going to take this back to July. And I am going to go back to five, four, three, and then to three like so. Okay. And then... I'm going to change this to year six plus. If you're curious how you do that, I hit control one. That's going to open up my format cells dialog box. Under custom, you'll see year zero. This is how I create these in uh, cell labels. I just add the plus on the end and that will just append a plus to that. But I can just put a six or I can put a five or I can put a four. Excel reads this as a numeric value even though it has those labels in the cell. And this is a like so, okay. So we're almost there. Next, what we're going to do is we're gonna write the logic itself. And this is how the logic is going to look. So I'll, I'll do this in, in phases again, um, just so you can see the logic. It starts with, we need to pull in the line item when the line item begins. Now, right now the start for the line item is month one. So I go equals, open parentheses, the current period, I'm gonna hit F4 one, two times. That will lock in the, in the row so I can copy it down but not lock in the column. And I'm gonna ask, is that equal to the start month? And I'll, lock, I'll hit F4 one, two, three times. That locks in the column so I can copy it to the right and the column will hold but I, as I paste down, the row will move. Close parentheses and that will return either a true or a false. If it's a false, it'll just simply be set as a zero because we'll be multiplying it by a value. Otherwise, it will return that value. What is the value? When we multiply it by, what is the value? It's the amount of the line item. I'll hit F4, one, two, three times the lock in the column so we can uh, copy this down and use this on multiple line items, but divided by 12 because this line item, this amount is an annual amount. Close parentheses. And so now what you're gonna see if I just copy this over a few columns, it's going to output in the period where this starts. That's all it does, okay? Let's come back to one. 
Then what we want it to do, so I hit F2, open this back up. I'm going to add to this the previous value, okay? So the, the value immediate in the period prior to that, it's gonna add that, plus it's going to add, open parentheses, the value in the previous period multiplied by this helper row, the percentage growth, okay? And I'm gonna lock in the helper row one two times to lock in just the row, but leave the column relative. Close parentheses. Let me make sure my signs are right. They are. Okay, actually, let's do, no, that's right. So these are together. That plus this plus this, okay? So if we did it correctly, should be able to copy this all the way to the end. And what we now start seeing is we see no growth until our first change, which is July of year one. We have a 5% increase, and I can confirm that. This is my air check. I confirm that by, by going current value divided by the previous value. It increases by 5%, 1.05. And this is the last piece. I'm gonna just copy this air check over. And now we're gonna see it. It's gonna stay the same. And then in July, it increases by five. The next Ju July, it increases by four and a half. The following by four. The following by three and a half. The following by three. And then three thereafter each July to the end. Okay? So, that is how we model irregular growth rates. Let me know if you have any questions about this. This is a fun exercise I think worth doing. Um, I'll include the file uh, so you can go ahead and download this. What you'll find in this file is the template so you can do the same exercise I just did. You'll also find the completed version here so you can see the formulas that I used to complete this exercise. And with that, thanks for watching.